Hello, everyone, and Happy New Year. This is Tim. And this is Dane. This is a special edition of Was It Worth It? The Video Game Review Podcast, but we're not really reviewing a video game this time, more a year. The year being 2014, as Dane and I are going to each give our top five games of 2014, and we're not going to stick to the games specifically that we reviewed. We're going to do all the games that we played, and hey, if you're listening to this, if you're watching it on YouTube, comment. Let us know your top five, too. Let us know why our top five lists are dumb, or, you know, you can do your just your best and worst, your top ten, whatever you want to do. Let us know what games you liked of 2014, which I thought was a pretty good year for gaming. Yeah, it was okay. I've been seeing, uh, you know, in the articles and whatnot on some of the gaming media sites have been kind of saying that it was sort of a lukewarm year for gaming. I, I feel like that's a little more negative than the impression that I got. I mean, yeah. I, I think that 2014 was pretty good. Nothing too crazy. As a Nintendo fan, personally, I think that it was excellent. Yeah, and I think from an indie game perspective, it was a really good year as yeah, well. Yeah, that's true. A lot of great indie games this year. Okay, so Dana, what's your number five? So the fifth game on my list, it's probably going to be Luftrausers by Vlambeer. You know, I just feel like that game really accomplished so much with so little. All you do is, like, literally, you just launch a little plane, kill as much shit as you possibly can, and then you die. Yeah. Like, that's the whole game. Yeah, I would say that Luftrausers has an honorable mention on my list. It is not my top five, but definitely almost made it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, somehow, despite the simplicity of it, as I just mentioned, I, I got really sucked into it, if you remember, because Tim and I live together oh, yeah. currently. Um, I, I just happened to have a week between jobs where I had nothing to do, and that game just scratched an itch the entire week. It just <laughs> continued to scratch the itch. I got really sucked in. I played it over and over and over and over. Uh, I unlocked every last achievement. We got all the plane parts and the secret final plane, and it was a blast. I really have fond memories of it. It's especially surprising because you're not a big fan of, you know, shoot 'em ups or uh, no, uh, yeah, uh, space shooters or airplane yeah, shooters, exactly. like the side-scrolling variety. Mm -hmm. I usually don't like, but this was a little different. It was a little more open-ended. It's it a roguelike. Yeah, yeah, and it's a roguelike, and I, I really liked that about it too. The music was was really great, really catchy, and, and just fun. How you change your different plane pieces, yeah, and it changed saying. changed the music. Well, what was your uh, uh, number five? Uh, my number five was Transistor by Supergiant Games. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not familiar with it, it's a really interesting RPG slash action game. More strategy than action, although yeah. you can kind of interchange it. Um, set in a cyberpunk utopia. We interviewed the lead artist, Gen Z, uh, for our show... Name Your Game. Name Your Game. I forgot the name of it. Uh, <laughs> which, <laughs> name Your um, Show. So you should, you should check that out. You know, this game, I feel like, could have been higher on my list if the story was better. The story was really underwhelming, but the gameplay was really interesting. You had really interesting choices to make. The music was fantastic, and the visuals blew me away. There's so yeah. much to like about this game. Definitely. Excellent game overall. I'm surprised that game didn't make it a little higher on your list. I guess I just... Yeah. Uh... So what's your number four, Dane? My number four is going to be... It's actually two games uh, from the same series, both of which came out this year. And they're uh, Five Nights at Freddy's 1 and ah. 2 by Scott Cawthorn. Interestingly, I don't actually own either game, and I experienced <laughs> every facet of them through Let's Plays on YouTube. And I almost never experience entire games this way. But these games are really, really scary. They're really frightening. The thought of actually playing them, being in control of the character, kind of makes me feel some genuine stress and anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, having played the game... The first I, game, I, yes. Yeah. I, I definitely understand. So my experience of, of, of playing them has been watching other people play, like I mentioned. And after watching the games in their entirety, I just, I have so much love and respect for them. I, I feel like they manage, just like Luftrausers, they manage to accomplish so much with so little. I mean, in, dif in different ways, of course. You know, most of the games are, are composed of still images as you just look through these camera feeds. But there's just, there's so much more going on. And, and the more you experience the games you kind of start to figure out more things about the plot. Uh, there's a lot of mystery there. I mean, you can play through all of them and just make it your goal to get through all the nights and, and not get killed by the automatons or whatever mm -hmm. and not notice anything about the story. But if you're paying close attention and you're looking at certain things on some of the walls or you're listening to what the guy on the voicemails mm -hmm. says... You know, there's really an interesting story, and they really flesh it out a little bit more in the second game, too. It just really, I, I got sucked into it a little bit. I started reading on the forums for the game, the theories, and, and that sort of thing. And then that was just really cool. And, and speaking of horror games, I almost considered P.T., the uh, playable teaser for the upcoming Silent Hill game for this list. But uh, it kind of just amounts to a free demo on PS4, so it would have felt a little cheap to sure. pick that. Uh, but I do consider it a runner-up, because Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro really swung for the fences there, and it paid off. It's one of the scariest games, if not the scariest game I think I've ever played. Right. It's 
Yes, they a really... game that I will never play. <laughs> well, maybe you should watch a YouTube video or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's really, I mean, it's just impressive what they accomplished there, but it really is just a small little thing. So anyway, uh, what's your number four? So my number four is probably going to be on every single top games of 2014 list. In fact, most people probably have it higher up than four on their list. It's Shovel Knight. I don't know what I, don't know what I can really say about Shovel Knight. If, you, if you're familiar with it, you know that it's a great game. You know, it's yeah. a, if, if you're not familiar with it, it's a... It's an 8-bit platformer that mm-hmm. uh, is a huge throwback to my youth and the youth of so many other gamers. Draws inspiration from a plethora of other franchises that are so beloved, like Mega Man, Zelda, Super Mario, etc. There's so much heart and soul in, in Shovel Knight. I, it was a really enjoyable game, but to me, it, there's nothing new about it. Like, it was, there were so many parts where I was like, okay, yeah, I've seen that before. But at the same time, it took things from, like, Mega Man or Super Mario and... Right. Fleshed it out, you know what I mean? Polished yeah. it a little bit. Um, also, I, there's so many little details that are so great in the game. I really enjoyed the game, but this is my personal list, right? Yeah. So while a lot of people are calling it Game of the Year, some people are saying it's the best game ever, which <laughs> I won't say anything about that. But um, for me, it was good, but it wasn't. Uh, it didn't blow me away. Sure. All right, well, moving on to number three. Now, this is interesting. You picked Transistor as your number five, and I picked Transistor as my number three. Yeah. You know, like we mentioned, uh, it's from Supergiant Games. I don't think we mentioned, though, when, when you listed it. Right. It's the follow-up to Bastion, which, uh, you know, means that Transistor really had a lot to live up to. Because really Bastion, Bastion took everybody by surprise, and it's a great game on its own. But I think Transistor not only lives up to Bastion's greatness, but it surpasses it. I mean, just the world is so much more interesting. Not that Bastion's wasn't interesting, but the world is so interesting. You mentioned it's the cyberpunk utopia, yeah, yeah. which it's just gorgeous. It, oh, it's, yeah. it's beautiful. I mean, and, and the art style really helps that. Um, you mentioned Gen Z. We interviewed her for Name Your Game, and, and she's just so incredibly talented. The characters that they've created are really interesting, in my opinion. I love the character designs and the colors, and the combat is just really fresh and fun with that sort of turn-based... Or, or rather, it's um, like the strategy where mm-hmm. you kind of you freeze it and then you put in commands. Yeah, exactly. That was just really cool. Uh, you know, there's a, some minor gripes like you had, uh, and and we got into those a little more on our was it worth it bonus episode. Yep. But uh, overall, Transistor's a, a fantastic game and such an amazing deal for 14.99. Plus, I think it's on holiday sale right now for 10. Probably, yeah. Yeah, so it's such a good deal, such a great game. Oh yeah. So uh, my number three is uh, another indie game. So we've got three indie games in a row here, and it's the Banner Saga. Ah. Um, it is a fantastical RPG with tactical combat set in a really interesting setting uh, inspired by Norse mythology, mm-hmm. uh, Vikings and whatnot. I really enjoyed its spin on the normal tactical combat. The combat had so many interesting decisions to make. I love tactical combat games, and this sure. is the first one I've played in a long time that really was different you know there's so many tough decisions to make not just in the combat but out of combat throughout the story there's so many tough decisions you have to make and it has kind of like a no take back mechanic because it auto saves after every decision (laughs) um so you're kind of stuck with every decision you make which to me it made it feel like there's actually more on the line that so um, it gives it more replay value yeah for sure um yeah i definitely i actually do want to play through that game again just because there's so many decisions that I that could have gone the other way, and definitely, yeah. Um, there, you know, there were some issues with it. I, I especially when it comes to the art, I had problems. But check out our review we did, in which you can yeah. click the link and you, and you can hear more about it. But no, I I really loved the Banner Saga, um, and hence why it's number three on my list. I thought the Banner Saga was pretty good. Uh, you know, I played it obviously yeah. for our was it worth it, but uh, it didn't make my list. But it's right. definitely a great game. Um, so my number two. Uh, and, and a lot like with Transistor, where we both picked that, my number two is Shovel Knight. Oh, there you go. So uh, I guess we'll have to find a, a few more things to say about that. I, I think that's actually a really good example of sort of an extreme amount of hype paying off. A lot of the time there are games that get extremely hyped, especially like games like this one where they're kickstarted and make a bajillion dollars. Sure. Um, and then end up not really living up to people's expectations. And I feel like Shovel Knight by Yacht Club really did. And it was pushed back a few times too, wasn't it? I'm um, fairly certain it yeah, did, I think so. they had to delay its release. So it just came out earlier this year, and to me, it's a masterpiece. You know, it, it obviously sets out to feel like a throwback to so many great classic Nintendo games, like you mentioned um, Zelda 2 and Mega Man, and you mean there's some like DuckTales and Castlevania. Oh, and yeah. So much Ghouls in there. Ghouls and Ghosts. 
Yeah, and it really achieves all of that with flying colors. And you, you mentioned, though, that because it kind of takes from so many of those things that it doesn't necessarily feel new. Right. I personally felt like it was a clear homage to those classics, but still managed to keep its own identity. I think that's the case, but at the same time, they did things that were, that were I guess, all homage to, but still, in my opinion, the same. Anyway, I don't want to get... This is your number two. I don't want to criticize it too much because it is a great game. If um, only we did a Was It Worth It for Shovel Knight. Yeah, <laughs> why didn't we? I think it dropped at a time where we just weren't actively doing yeah, show or yeah, something like true. that. Yeah, that's And or, by the time we, were, we could have reviewed it, there had been like 150,000 reviews of it already. So we're yeah, like, well, maybe we shouldn't do it. Something like that. But yeah, gosh, I love this game. And one more thing I want to mention about it is the soundtrack. So good. It's really good. Jake Kaufman, a.k.a. Vert, is... A genius like he, he makes soundtracks for a lot of games now mm -hmm. there's a Shantae game that came out recently which is like the genie mm. character um, the soundtrack to that game is just amazing it's on sound, uh, SoundCloud I've been gotcha. listening to it it's so good but yeah Shovel Knight that's my number two my number two um, I was debating whether or not to include it because it's technically an expansion pack it's Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls okay uh, by including this I'm also including all the changes that were made in the pre-expansion patch because essentially they were changes to the game that were meant to be part of the expansion sure to an extent so i was a huge fan of diablo 2 completely underwhelmed by diablo 3 at launch now reaper of souls and the pre-expansion patch completely changed it up it moved away from the old diablo 2 format got rid of the auction house and real money auction house um added so many cool things like adventure mode dynamic difficulty settings nephilim rifts and so much more it to me it brought diablo back to relevance and and not just relevance, but greatness. I've been playing that game the past few weeks a lot, and uh, I'm enjoying it as much as I enjoy Diablo 2. Wow. So, yeah, that I feel like if you're a fan of Diablo, and you played Diablo 3 at launch, and were disappointed, and haven't gone back since, you really should pick up Reaper of Souls. It is a fantastic game that any fan of Diablo would like. Awesome. That kind of reminds me of, um, I would have even considered this game because I started playing it again just recently, but uh, it, it didn't come out this year. The Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn, which was Square Enix's attempt at fixing the Abomination, which was the original Final <laughs> yeah. Fantasy XIV. I cannot believe how they managed to turn that thing around. Really? Yeah. Definitely, like, and, and that kind of reminds me of Diablo 3. Sure, yeah. In which they managed to take something that could have really just gone up in flames and smoldered, and that was it. And they really brought it back, you know, the phoenix rose from the ashes, so to speak. Yep. Uh, and, and yeah, that's how I feel about Final Fantasy XIV and Realm Reborn, just a side note. Yeah. Um, but I guess moving on to my number one game of the year, and people who know me pretty well probably wouldn't be surprised to hear this, but <laughs> my number one game, it's Super Smash Bros. for the 3DS and Wii U. Uh, I pretty much cannot pick this game as my number one game for 2014 because I'm just I'm a huge fan of the Smash Brothers series in general and competitive fighting games. Right. And there was just so much hype for for this game, the, you know, the latest addition to the series. And just like with Shovel Knight, that hype really paid off. Like they did an amazing job bringing in sort of like the speed and the tight mechanics that were in Smash Brothers Melee, with the huge character roster and like the wide selection of stages and the improved graphics and features that Brawl brought to the table. Uh, not to mention the fact that there's like 52 characters or something like that, and almost all of them are balanced. Uh, I mean, some are definitely being looked at as like being better than others in sort of the tournament tiers and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, as long as you kind of understand how the game works and you have some skill, you can play almost any character in the game and play that character well. Right. Uh, which is really cool with such a big roster of characters. And uh, the last thing I want to say is that it's just like a magical experience to be able to pick the game up on my 3DS and just go anywhere I want and play it on the go and have it feel just as good. Right. Um, but then, you know, sit down when I'm at home and play it on a larger, like on a TV with, with the higher resolution graphics and whatnot on the Wii U. Just being able to interchangeably do both of those is really awesome and not many games yeah, give that's, you the uh, uh, capability to do that. I was going to say, that's really innovative. In innovate innovative. 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 There Innovative. we go. Yeah. <laughs> so well done, Nintendo, there. Because yeah. as much as they have dropped the ball uh, on things such as online play yeah. um, and, and other things like that, that is really something to respect. Because, yeah. And, and uh, speaking of online play, the online play in this game is actually amazing. Like, right. Brawl really, it sucked so bad in Brawl. Anybody that plays Smash Brothers knows that the online matches in Brawl were practically unplayable they might right. as well not have even tried sure but in this game it's great especially if you on the wii u if you use the LAN adapter and you're plugged in it's pretty much perfect awesome yep 
And so, how about your number one? That's uh, So my number one is Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. So uh, several reasons why this is my number one. One is scratch that itch that I've been having for a long time about wanting a good Lord of the Rings game. Uh, yeah. I'm a huge fan of Tolkien and the universe, the Lord of the Rings universe, Middle Earth and all that. The story wasn't fantastic, but there were so many things in it. Like uh, technically the story wasn't canon, but all the lore behind it was. Sure. Um, so I loved how like they talked about Glorfindel and the crafting of the, the rings of power and all that kind of stuff it, it brought in a lot of interesting stuff from the silmarillion that you that average lord of the rings fan wouldn't really know about um, sure by by that i mean people who have only read the book series or have only seen the movies haven't gone any farther you know any deeper into the lore than that um now the, the big thing that really made it number one for me is the nemesis system this was something completely new extremely engaging and they executed it perfectly um for it's really rare to see something that's completely new executed so well especially yeah. by a triple a game totally um you know that's that's been a, a thing of triple a games recently is they're just super iterative it's the next call of duty it's the next grand theft auto it's you know it's things that have been done a little differently than they were the previous time but right. this was something new it took the combat of you know Assassin's Creed and the Arkham games, but the Nemesis system was so new, so interesting. It did a lot um, in, toward, in terms of bringing my respect back for AAA games. Uh, sure. It's an extremely fun game. I know people have a lot of issues with the story, people have issues with the combat, um, and I do have some issues as well, but it's a game that I could not get enough of. It just, I, I kept wanting to play. The world was so immersive and it felt so alive and every I would constantly be running into guys that were trying to kill me and it, I don't know, it just... It's it, a beautiful game too. Yeah, it, oh yeah, it looks fantastic and I've just, I've never played an open world game where the world felt so alive to me. Um, awesome. Until Far Cry 4, but that's, <laughs> right. didn't make my list. It does get an honorable mention, though, because it's a good game. It, for a AAA game as well, yes. definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and Monolith, they're local, too. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's cool. Yeah, very cool. All right, well, thanks for listening. Um, again, post your lists for us to see so that we can tell you why your list sucks as much as ours does. Um, <laughs> that's not true. We won't. No. We'll, we'll only say good things to you people because we love you. Uh, yeah, thanks for listening, and, uh, you know, was it worth it? The actual review, game reviews, will be coming back soon. Um, we took some time off in December, but... Yep, uh, just for the holidays. But, yeah, we'll get back to it soon, and we'll kind of do the rotating cast thing. Yeah, uh, so who so, knows who'll be, <laughs> who will um, be reviewing next. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so uh, thanks so much for listening, and... Um, yeah, check out our website, sharkertank.com, the shark with a Z. Yeah. Have a good night. Bye.